infectious diseases. I'm going to look at two. Uh, I'm going to look at the plague. I don't know whether you've seen this classic picture before. This is a plague doctor. So people actually dressed up like this and went around knocking on people's doors of the plague. If, if you, if, I don't know if you live in Edinburgh or if, you, if you've got time to look around. There's this great tour you can do around Edinburgh where you can go to the catacombs and kind of um, basically look under the city because what they did during the plague here was they actually bricked people in to stop the plague spreading. It was, it was horrendous what they were doing at the time. So this is the time of William Harvey when he was doing all his circulation stuff. This was going on. Okay, People were just frightened of the plague. They didn't understand it. Okay. Um, and I'm also going to talk about this, foot and mouth disease. So some of you may know what this is. In 2001, we had a huge epidemic of foot and mouth disease in the UK, and it caused huge problems. And I'll tell you a bit more about this and how mathematics was involved in uh, helping stop this outbreak at the time. Okay. So, okay, so what's the question? Here's, what's the question that we're going to try and answer this time? Okay. How many people do we need to vaccinate if we want to prevent a disease from spreading? So if we have a vaccine, how many should we, how many should we try and get? Okay. It's an important question. Um, so that's the question I'm going to try and answer. Okay. So um, the mathematical theory behind this goes back to the 1920s, okay, to uh, Kermick and, and McKendrick. And so they had a, a model for, for infectious diseases, kind of a simple model. Um, so this is the mathematical equation for it. I'm not going to uh, go into to what, what that all means. We, just, well, we can write it down, OK? And, and we can solve it. I can solve that equation. Um, but um, let me tell you what the model, model means in words. So, OK. So what they did was they split the population into two groups. Um, the proportion of people that were susceptible, so in other words, didn't have the disease but could potentially get it. And the rest of the population were the proportion that had the disease. So basically could pass it on to one of those susceptible people. Okay. And then what they did was they wrote down an equation for the rate of change in the number of infected people. So does that go, the number of people with the disease, does that go up or down? Okay. That's what they're trying to write an equation for. Well, whether it goes up or down, it depends on the rate that new infections are, are created. So if, if you're infectious and you're sitting next to your neighbour that's susceptible, what's the chance you pass that on? Okay. That's going to be included in here. And then also, what's the rate that the infectious person, you, you're the infectious, that you, you just basically like die from the disease or, or recover from it? Okay. So those were the two terms they had. And this very simple idea actually gave a lot of really important information. So they solved those equations. And what you can do is you can plot, as a function of time, so time here, we can plot the number, the proportion of infectious individuals. What we see is that as the infection kicks off, the number of susceptibles, so the people that don't have the disease, is going down. The people with the disease is going up. So it's spreading. Okay, You're passing it to your neighbor. It's spreading around the room. Okay, it reaches some peak, and it reaches a peak It's basically run out. All your neighbours are infected. Okay, you can't pass it on anymore. Everyone around you has got the disease. There's only a few people way off in the corners of the room that don't have it. Okay, so it reaches some peak and then starts to die out because basically you've just got no one that doesn't have the disease, and the people that have the disease are starting to die off. Okay? So this is what's called an epidemic, and this is the kind of thing you want to prevent. You want to stop. You want to make this peak as small as possible, and you want to even stop it happening. So you want to stop the number of infectious individuals growing. You want to kind of stop that. That, is, that would be an objective if you wanted to kind of treat a disease or vaccinate a disease. Okay, so this is what came out of um, their model. And let's look at, the, look at what the data for the plague gave us. So this is the data for the plague. And you can see, look, it looks pretty much the same. This is actually their model fitted to the plague data. So the little dots here are the plague data. So we've got time and the number of individuals that are either haven't got the disease or have. And you can see, actually, it's amazing. The model did an amazing job of predicting it. Um, so in terms of the quantities that they got from their model, they got the rate that, that new infections were created. That was happening at about roughly 14% um, a day were getting infected. And the rate that they were recovering or dying was about 9% a day, roughly. Okay. So, this is, so this, is the, this is the rate things were happening for the, for the plague. So if you think about 14% of the rate you're getting infected, that's pretty high. Yeah? That's like more than 1 in 10 chance of, of getting the disease. OK, so what about if we wanted to try and stop the spread of this? Okay. Well, let's think about these two quantities again. The rate of new infections being created and the rate at which they're, they're dying off. Okay. 
We need the new infections to be, we need, if, this, if the disease is going to spread, we need to have more new infections being created than, than there are people, the infectious people dying off. Okay. And if we rearrange that equation, so if I bring this onto the other side, then we get this quantity that's very, very important in, um, in thinking about infectious diseases, and it's called the basic reproductive rate. It's called R0. So it's the number of uh, the rate of new infection over the rate of people with the infection are dying off. And so that's in terms of those quantities I just showed you, it's B over G. So if this number's bigger than one, so in other words, if you're creating more infection than you're losing, then the infection's going to spread. Kind of makes sense. Okay, and what we can do is we can calculate this quantity for a whole bunch of diseases. If I calculate for the plague, it's actually 1.6. So that tells us the disease is going to spread and we're going to get an epidemic. Okay, well, so what do I need to do if I want to vaccinate? How do I get that? What I want to do is get that below one, that number below one, because if it's below one, the disease is going to die out. Okay, I've got more people dying from the disease than I have new infections being created. Okay, so how do I do that? How many should I immunise? So I've got, if I assume P, proportion P I'm going to immunise in my population, and the uh, one minus P of them, the rest basically, are going to be susceptible. I introduce the infection and then see what happens. Okay, so how big should I make P? Okay, well here's the equation we just see. So we think about this quantity that I just talked about. So the rate of new infection divided by the rate that the infection is being lost. Okay. If that's bigger than one, we have an epidemic, we have an outbreak of the disease. If it's less than one, we don't. Okay. Well, what does that, how does that change when we introduce vaccination? Okay. Well, it changes by multiplying the top bit by one minus P, because the rate of new infection is kind of shrinking now because we've got less people we can pass the disease on to because we've vaccinated them. Okay. And one minus P is the proportion of susceptibles. It's the amount of people that are, that are kind of available to infect. Okay. So... In terms of our original problem, our original uh, reproductive rate was R0, and now this is 1 minus P times that. Okay. So it's smaller. Okay. So what we need to do then is we need to get this number less than 1 so that the disease doesn't spread. So how should P, should P be to make R less than 1, this quantity less than 1? Well, the bigger we make this, this is a number less than 1. The smaller this is going to be. Okay. And so when we multiply this, it's going to shrink this R0. Okay. So I've worked that out for a bunch of diseases. So how big, how much, how, what percentage of the people should we vaccinate to uh, stop an outbreak? So um, here's the plague. We need to vaccinate about 40% of our population, which you think, oh, that's not too bad, okay. Um, smallpox, this is pretty much eradicated from the world now, and it's, it's largely due to vaccination. That has an R0 of four. Remember, if this is bigger than one, you get an epidemic. So normally we would get an epidemic. If we vaccinate about 75% of the population, we don't. Okay, the disease will just die out before it gets going. Okay. Polio, my, my, my parents' generation, polio is still a big thing. People, like my friend's uh, dad had polio as a kid and he's now has trouble walking and stuff and that was sort of a common consequence of polio. So this was kind of a disease that's still in our you know, family's lifetime. Uh, you had to vaccinate 85% of the population to ensure that you don't get an epidemic again. Measles, now this is, this is still a disease we hear today. You have to, that, that's got incredible high, high R0. It's very, very infectious. That has a vaccination percentage of 95%. So I need to get 95% of the people in this room vaccinated to ensure that that um, infection won't kick off. So this is a big issue. So you may have heard like recently in the news that you hear like, oh, measles, there's been a measles outbreak in a school and stuff like that. That's largely because we've gone below this 95% vaccination level. Okay. People have stopped um, uh, getting vaccinated against measles so much, and as a consequence, we've slipped below this threshold, and we're starting to see those little outbreaks take off. So these kind of uh, quantities for vaccination are really important. So I've got um, 